Um, what's the difference between the abolitionist project and the hedonistic imperative? Um, the abolitionist project is f focused on phasing out the biology of suffering, and humans and non-humans alike. Uh, the question is, after we have phased out involuntary suffering, where do we go from there? Should we be satisfied with relatively mediocre states, or should we aim to plunge on? Because technically, at least, there's no reason why life shouldn't be animated by gradients of bliss that are orders of magnitude richer than anything physiologically feasible today. Already we're homing in on the molecular signature of, of, of pure bliss. Um, given today's limited understanding, it'd be very, di very difficult to secure extraordinarily high-functioning, empathetic, pro-social well-being that's also exceptionally blissful. But in future, as we understand more about the mind-brain, uh, yes, it would be possible to be much more ambitious, true paradise engineering. Uh, though it's almost cruel to say so today, uh, it may prove technically at least relatively straightforward to phase out the biology of suffering. Much, much more ambitious, however, is full-blown paradise engineering. Mm. So, I guess hedonistic imperative is about what we can do now, um, and the Oh, sorry, uh, the abolitionist project is what we can do now about phasing our, our suffering and the hedonistic imperative is about where we can take this and more um, and how we can increase our potential for pleasure um, and hedonism in the future. Yes, uh, though uh, I don't think we should postpone any form of serious enjoyment until we've phased out suffering, nonetheless one needs to be very, very careful pursuing the more extreme forms of pleasure that they don't diminish our empathetic concern for other sentient beings. Uh, indeed, I think we ought to treat the existence of suffering in both uh, humans and non-human animals as a, a, an emergency and be devoting our, our efforts towards, towards phasing it out. Yes.